we return with our new title screen. Based on the events of the last two videos, it's interesting. Seeing the darkest parts of their hearts coming up to the forefront on the climb to the top of the tower and the reveal of the Dark One. Eddie's clear purpose motivated by... Uh, I'm not good enough for her. I'll never be this weak again. It really stuck out to me that Lily was apologizing. I want to be careful where I save. I still want to hang on to these saves. <laughs> as long as possible. Leela was apologizing. Almost. Although still ideally. Oh no. Okay. We got a long way to go. Ruby gets double flame marrow though. Obviously... I'm assuming same structure. Oops. Yeah, same structure. Small monolith with a keyhole. Go here and there. Grief eaters! But first. Fuck. Just for the hell of it, let's see if we can get Eddie's weapon to proc. <laughs> Whoa, shit! Nope, Ruby's gonna get the crit. Never mind. My bad. <laughs> Worth a shot. Thanks, Ruby. Grief eaters! We're kinda low on shit. Well, okay. Rally cry. Nature's gift. Holy water, Ruby. Holy water, Amy. Okay. Ow. Not kind. Hell yeah. Alright, party time. Skull split. Uh, just more heal. Holy water, yeah. yeah. And really... May as well. In all honesty, it's easier than dealing with... See? There we go. No poison necessary. Boom. Skull split. Nature's gift. Show off Eddie's spell that he got fairly recently. Good damage. Oh shit, now Eddie's asleep. Good job, Eddie. Oh shit, now Siggy's asleep. That's not ideal. Okay, that went well. Let's try this again. Eddie, show off your normal attack, which is what I wanted to show off last time. There we go. Blood magic at work. Ow. Really? Okay, you want to play that game. Okay, wake up. Ruby's awake. Oh, fuck's sake! I know I was joking before about uh, Leela being my RNG goddess, 
but it, yeah. Just fucking do damage. The fuck? What the hell? Bloody hell! Thank God. Grand, more evasion. Excellent. Okay, good. Get fucking out of here. Jesus. Now we can relax a little bit. Good. Always need more monster repellent. Okay. Now we can calm down some. I don't know if this will... If that'll proc on normal enemies, but I'm gonna try. Oh, Ruby gets the crit. Oh, hell you go! Alright! Cost of blood magic, though. Amy levels up, Eddie levels up. Jesus. That was one of the rougher fights we've had. Okay. What is it? Oh. For it was my mother who burdened her sleep along with the flowers she loved so much. Then it was my father, whose heart of gold could not withstand the searing flames. The last to be taken was my baby brother, rendered to ashes within his bed, alongside the piece of my soul I lost that day. Boom. Oh? Okay. I will take more tonics. Read this clue again. This is my mother who buried to sleep on with the flowers she loved so much. Father, heart of gold. Baby brother. Oh shit. No, not you. Oh yeah. Alright, gaining level. So, first, flowers. Let me examine these. First, flowers, then, heart of gold. hand running. Hell yeah. Locked. I assume we are going to... Ugh, God, this is... Shit. Damn, those Eddie crits hurt. Got a purity elixir, though. <sighs> Do that. Heart of gold. So I'm not sure if it's this or the, uh... This. Which one of these counts as gold sheets? We'll find out if we're wrong, I guess. Baby brother... Oh, yep. Okay. Damn. Edric. I'm alright. I just... never expected to have to burn a child's bed like this. What Leela must have lost in her previous life was truly tragic indeed. That is kinda... Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. 
get out of here. Thank you. Goodbye. I destroyed the fairy tale I had been living. I destroyed my childish comforts, my clothing of contentment, and every last memory I treasured in my chest. Childish comforts, clothing in my clothing of contentment, every last memory I treasured in my chest. Burned all the blossoms of goodness in my life to ash. Blotted out the light of happiness. And now I only wish it had taken me in my sleep instead of them. Ooh no. That sucked, but it ended with a delicious irony of the last Siren using Song of Healing and then Eddie getting a weapon skill crit. Oh man, what were we doing here? Oh my god. That was awful. <laughs> that was fucking awful. Okay, let's not do that again. How many monster repellents we have? We have a lot of monster repellents. Let's use it to get through this puzzle. Okay, childish comforts. Clothing of contentment. Trest. Blossoms. Light. Okay, childish comforts. Bye bye, teddy bear. I'm so sorry. Clothing of contentment. Every last time I treasured my chest, blossoms, bought out the light, and then bed. Goodbye, treasure chest. No treasure for us. Blot out the light. Oof. And then... Is that? Uh... Did we screw this up? Oh, the books had to come first. Shit. Fairy tale, childish comforts, clothing, chest, flowers. Okay, burn the books. Childish comforts. Edric has to do all of this burning. Getting a clear picture. Everything it took from her and how much it's made her suffer. He's getting a very hands-on impression of what all it took from her. More burning pits. Gods. Leela's past life was defined by destruction and loss. It's unsurprising that such things would be reflected here in the tower. That must be why she's so desperate to keep us by her side. But hurting us isn't going to replace what she lost. She's going to make everyone unhappy in the end. Surely she realizes that, right? It's not always that easy. The jeweled key. It's not always that easy. Okay. Uh, I think I'm gonna jump down below here. Um. Okay. Well, that was dumb. I accidentally hit run. Well, shit. 
Alright, whatever. We'll keep going. Oh god. No. Okay. God. Wow, that was wild. Amy levels up. Okay. Whew. Oh, that's right. We gotta fight more grief units. Make our lives somewhat easier. Oh, naturally. <sighs> Alright, what well, is the best thing to do? I vote for this. Always pickpocket. Okay, find it. Oh, this is not ideal. Ooh, a little bracelet. Thank you for not putting Amy to sleep. Take it there. What just happened? Okay, Grief Eater A is still paralyzed. Let's go after B. We need to keep health up. Try and paralyze C. Take more holy water. Okay, good. Keep health up. Getting damage off. Can't hurt. Good. Excellent. Get tracked. Oh, maybe your A is no longer paralyzed. That means it's time to bop you. Uh, heal. Can I put you to sleep? <laughs> okay, you're asleep now. Nice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Holy fuck. Siggy. Medicine. Hellfire. Ruby's a little behind in experience. I'm gonna say I... That's probably because I didn't actually fight any enemies in her labyrinth. And I did in Siggy and... Eddie's Let's smash some statues in preparation for the uh, horror of fighting them later on, no doubt. Oh shit. No. We should probably take on one more just to 
get Ruby up to everyone else. No. Okay, that just... There we go. Eddie again with the Madoon. Alright. Still not enough to level up Ruby, though. Damn, I really should have... In hindsight, I kind of regret that decision. Okay, fire is what took the ones I left away. And fire is what will reunite us all in paradise. No longer will I face the flames in fear. I will walk among them with no regrets. Oh. Oh. Shit. Gah. Son of a bitch! That hurt! Ugh. Is everyone alright? Yes, we're fine. Perhaps we ought to watch our step more carefully. Indeed. That hurt a little bit. But not... Game over worthy. Oh. Where are we going? Where are we going? Oh. That's the exit. Phew! Man, I'm sweating like a pig over here! I don't get it. Lila's always been afraid of fire, right? So why would this place have so much of it? Because I believe she no longer fears it as she used to. Her despair is such that what she once saw as a force of destruction, she now seems as seizes the form of liberation. In a dark way, after wondering regretting for years, fearing it as it took her family away from her. In some twisted way, painful way of dealing with that guilt, I can see it just as easily turning, it, turning around into, fire took my family from me. They're in a better place now. I'm left behind suffering and carrying the burden of that. Carrying the burden of that guilt. Almost almost the religious way of thinking. Fire. They're in a better place now. That so... Life became unbearable. I can see how that would be conflated too. I can see you can understand how it got to this point. How that fear turned around. Okay, that was fun. I'm surprised no one's really made a note that of all the fights that we show I'm pretty much 85% of the time have Ruby just stealing and what can I say she's a vital part of the supply chain of this party I mean that's literally how I got such a great stock of items from our last endgame run okay good I needed the potent tonic I don't need you fuck I'm gonna get you whether I like you or not Okay. Jesus. These things are persistent. <laughs> okay. Ruby a purity elixir. What is this now? More statues to Bob. Friends are my lifeline, my bastion of hope in a dark and lonely world. In gilded cages I will keep them.
counting the number of precious memories they have given me, waiting for heaven to punish me for my sins. Gilded ki oh. What is this now? Shit. Okay. Hey, Eddie. Oh, Eddie gets the first level up of the bunch. Hmm. Gilded cages. Oh boy. Plaques have been fastened to the floor. A hidden font of kindness. One soul more beautiful than he knows. Who held my two hands when I needed it the most, and inspires all four of us with his creativity. Time for an enemy repellent. Hell yeah. As before, my wellspring of courage, four years of suffering yielded twice the bravery I'll ever possess, and one single song to unite us all. And rubes? A plaque's been fastened before. My source of joy and laughter, three friends whose lives were brightened by one person's smile, no two days alike because of her spirited spontaneity. What is this now? Ruby time. Good. Bam. Alright, what did that do? Oops, wrong button. Okay, what happens if I... Oh shit! Oh no! Oh no! No! Ah! Yeah, that's a bad idea. Gah. Ziggy! Are you okay? Uh, it, yeah, I'm okay. I think. It seems that these statues simply weren't meant to be destroyed. Well, that was a... <laughs> Holy hell. That's not the solution. Hmm. <sighs> Well... Okay. Siggy is now in jail. Congratulations, Siggy. I'm not entirely sure how I managed that, but... Siggy is in jail. Getting all the luck with Budo today. Oop, Amy learned Heaven's Blessing. Which is gonna be very helpful if you have to keep fighting these buggers. Ruby could use a tonic. We're running low on the potent variety. But we may as well. Two hand. Oh! 
Oh, the... Twice. Two. Four. Two. One. Okay. One soul, two hands, four of us. And Ruby is three friends, one person, two days. One soul, two hands, all four of us. So let's put Eddie in jail next. One soul, two hands. Four of us. Jail time, Eddie. Uh, I don't remember Ruby's. Holy oh, fuck! Get me out of here. Thank you. Three, one, two. Okay. Okay, we're getting better. It's a good sign level-wise. Three. Yeah, it's a very good sign level-wise when you can start running from everything. One. Two. Ruby did Ruby now in jail. Gilded prison, keep her friends safe. Leela. Is this really what she wants? To just trap us all in here like animals? What the hell is she thinking? We're her friends, not her damn pets. Desperation can cause one to take extreme measures, even someone as gentle as her. Lila, what happened to you that made, that made you so afraid of losing us? Mm. Again, yeah, there's still the looming question of what set her over that edge. Eddie with those clutch Mudo crits. Uh, Unfortunately, that means we have to end up curing him after every battle. That's okay, if it all goes well, we should get to a campfire. Oh boy. Hell yeah! Ruby levels up. Oh shit. Oh shit. I, forget, I always forget how stairs work. Bejeweled key? Click. And... Bejeweled key. Click. Francis! Francis? Oh, thank goodness. You had Aunt Ruby over here worried sick. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, I've missed you too, Francis. My apologies for leaving you alone on such short notice. Thank you for taking care of the store for me in my absence. You can understand him, Amatil? Then I suppose he's his book. As much of an ordinary dog as you were an ordinary merchant. Very astute, Eddie. Indeed. Francis was sent with me to this world in order to help maintain my disguise. He is a lesser heavenly being who served merchants and tradespeople for eons. In fact, you could say the store was his all along. And I was merely the figurehead. Wait, so that makes Francis an angel too, right? I guess we ought to be grateful to have all this divine intervention behind our backs. Thank you, Francis, for everything you've done for us. Francis says you're welcome. Heh <laughs> well, Angel or not, you're still a good boy in my eyes. Now how about showing us what sorts of gear you got in stock? 
I second that request. As it now stands, we'll need all the assistance we can get in this place. I believe that was his way of saying he'd be glad to do so. We ought to take advantage of this time to rest and regroup as well. I have a feeling that this place has still has many dangers that we've yet to uncover. Indeed. Alright, let's get that safe in. Francis! <laughs> still happy to see us, eh, Francis? You know you're awfully friendly for an angel dog. Angel dog? Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, if there's one thing Francis hasn't lost over it over the ages, it's the friendliness and hospitality. Is that right, Francis? Oh, that does beg the question. If he too is an angelic being, then why take the form of a dog? Surely there are more advantageous disguises he could assume. I think you underestimate him, Edric. There's a very good reason he assumed this form. For one, dogs are inconspicuous. You wouldn't normally assume a, a house pet to be a servant of heaven in disguise, would you? Second of all, they're approachable. Though there are exceptions, humans tend to open their hearts to them, making it much easier to get his work done. And most importantly of all... Eh, mm, I think he simply enjoys being a dog. He's always loved being the center of attention, after all. Oh, I uh, guess I can't argue with that. <laughs> That is very fair. I feel like the easier no-nonsense... <laughs> the the, the no-nonsense answer to this question after all the... Uh, it's very inconspicuous being a dog. And third... And thirdly, and most importantly, he, he was a dog in life. He was a good boy in life, and now he's a good boy as an angel. Wow, I got a lot of money. Oh, I got a lot of wizard hats. Where did I get all these wizard wizard hats? Francis! I'm sorry, Francis. First off, are you wearing a wizard's hat? Yes, you are. So you can realistically get rid of the mage hats. Oh, okay. So that's just a. I know that I know that was a property of uh, Leela's uh, labyrinth weapon as a chance of healing the party. So I wasn't sure if that was intentional that uh, Amy's weapon also got that or not, but all is well. Okay. Okay, Francis. Give us some money. I don't really need three of those. Earth and fire. That is good. What else do we have hanging around? To get rid of. I'll get rid of one of those. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, 
I'll take a wizard tunic, please. Oh, wow. You've been sorely lacking on the glove side. Ninja goods. More ninja goods. Okay. Good boy. Can't get our equipment situation stored and sorted out. Okay. Yeah, my god, you were sorely lacking on the glove front, Nidrick. I'm so sorry. You ready for a wizard hat? You're a wizard, Eddie! You're a wizard. Ninja wraps, give me more luck. Ninja head. We already have a ninja headband. What am I doing? Ninja vest. Hell yeah. Give me that good shit. Okay. We have three of these. Why did I buy it? Why did I buy another one? Even so, no, that's a big drop though. I don't really like that. Jelly tuna kill. Mmm. Maybe you're really fine equipment wise. I don't know why I went and bought all of that. Guardsman's curious, yeah? Guardsman shield, sure. Really? Let's go full on war Siggy. He's still our biggest tank. No, Ruby's our biggest tank. Oh. Ruby's our biggest tank? Physical tank, at least. Okay. That's acceptable. We uh, got those Guardsmen's helmets through the uh, Ruby supply chain. around. Plus stuff's nice to have. But... Okay, what else can I stock up on while I'm here? Potent meds. Yes, please. Antonic, potent tonic. Yes, please. More memorable meds? We don't really... We may as well. And don't I wash. Why not? Purity elixirs. We don't have a lot of purity elixirs. My god. campfire and take a rest <sighs> okay Let's have Eddie talk to Amy. Amatiel, may I have a moment? Of course, Edric. Is something troubling you? Quite a bit, actually. In fact, I was uh, somewhat hoping that conversing with you would get my mind off of Leela for a moment. Oh, Edric. Indeed. 
It's often healthier to divert your attention from whatever is worrying you, at least momentarily. Now then, what is it you wanted to talk about? Well, there are several questions I have about you, Amatiel. Curiosities, so to speak. But I suppose I'll start with your appearance. You've already demonstrated your ability to shapeshift, so I assume you can do so at will? You would be correct. I mentioned that we angels must conform to the laws of the world we work in. That includes the forms we choose to take. Who knows, maybe our true forms are like the... Angels as actually described in... Like Old Testament stuff. And just giant wheels of eyes and pillars of fire and monstrous things. In this case, it took on the form of an elven girl. Though if I wanted to, I could have manifested as any other species or gender of your world would allow. Fascinating. And what of your true form? <laughs> or, or do you even have one to begin with? Uh, uh, well, uh, yes, I do have what would be considered a true form. However, however, we really have no reason to reveal those forms to mortal men. They are a shape wholly inconceivable to the human eye, or mind for that matter. I approve. Those who have been unfortunate enough to see our true forms are likely to go blind or even mad from the sight. I approve of this interpretation of angels. Hell yeah. M mad you say? <laughs> oh goodness. I haven't frightened you, have I? Oh, wide-eyed. Wide-eyed Amy. Expression. Not to worry. I would never expose you or your friends to such a thing. I'm duty bound to keep you safe after all. I, I wasn't trying to imply that you would. Please forgive any disrespect on my part. It's quite alright. If it makes you feel better, I never thought you were being disrespectful. Your inquisitiveness is a wonderful quality, Etric. Knowledge, after all, is far more powerful than any magic. Please don't hesitate if you wish to ask me anything else. Er, of course. Thank you, Amatiel, for your generosity. Two more conversations. Alright. The Eddie Show today. Eddie and Ruby. Poor bastard. What if I can help him get his mind off a leaf off somehow? Hey, Eddie, wanna help me make sense of something? Hmm. I can most certainly try. Though I fear I may be just as perplexed as you by our current situation. Ha! Wow, I totally thought you were gonna try. You gotta insult my intelligence again. Looks like the resident smart ass has a humble spirit after all. <laughs> And yet you return the favor by insulting me. <sighs> Go on. State your question before I change my mind. Right, well, how do I put this? Guess what I'm trying to say is that something's still missed in the timeline of all these events. We started out as regular people who played fantasy games as a hobby. Then something awful happened to us that we can't remember what exactly. Finally, we wake up here. With the characters we made up. No less. But how? I mean, magic didn't exist where we came from, right? If this whole world was made up from our game, then how the hell did it become real? That is a very good question, Ruby. One that I've pondered myself since remembering my past life. Clearly something unexplainable by our world's natural laws happened in order to bring us here. Something even we had no idea was happening. Given that, it may be more parsimonious to consider that our former world's perception of magic and miracles may, in fact, be wrong. There you go again, using big words I don't understand. But I kind of get the gist. You're saying that something magical did happen, after all. It's the most likely explanation, at least. Whatever happened to us back then it triggered some sort of miraculous event, creating this world out of our collective consciousness. In addition, we were also turned into the game avatars we had created, most likely due to the aforementioned miraculous event. But I have to wonder... Huh? Wonder what? Lila had mentioned that we had wanted to forget our former lives. What if the catalyst for all this was our own desire to escape ourselves? Are you seriously suggesting that we brought this on ourselves? I mean, yeah, we all had pretty sucky aspects of our lives, but people try to escape themselves all the time. That's what RPGs are for. Just because we practiced a bit of escapism from time to time doesn't mean we asked for any of this to happen. Fair point. I... Forgive me, Ruby. It was not my intention to imply that we deserved our fate. 
I ought to have chosen my, wor my words more carefully. But whatever the case may be, I'm certain we will understand more about what happened to us, so long as we're able to conquer the trials this tower has set for us. Right. I'm sick of all this cryptic crap. I want answers. No matter what it takes. Hell yeah. Alright. It's the Eddie show, so... Ziggy and Eddie. Hey, Edric. Sorry for asking, but... Are you holding up okay? Yes, good. I'm fine. And you're sure about that? You're not just trying to blow me off again, are you? <laughs> Look, I know it's hard for you to tell us how you feel. I get it. So that's exactly why I have to ask. Even in our past life, you never wanted to open up to us. Even, in, even when it was obvious you were... Anxious, depressed, emotionally unstable. I suppose I can't blame you for thinking I'm at risk. Growing up abused and ridiculed doesn't exactly do wonders for one's mental health. Don't put words in my mouth, Edric. I'm not worried about you because I think you're some head case. I'm worried about you because you're my friend. Now are you going to talk to me for once? Or are you just going to bottle up everything, bottle up everything like you always do? I, I... That got through. I'm sorry, Sigurd. I didn't mean to imply ill intent on your part. I just... I cannot help but think of Lila's betrayal as my own personal failure. My failure to see the ex true extent of her suffering. Perhaps my feelings for her blinded me to her pain. As a result, I couldn't do anything to stop all of this. Etric. It's like my feelings to her only inflame for her only inflame my own insecurities. If that were true, then we'd all share the blame. None of us could have known this would happen. Tell it hurts you in ways Ruby and I can't even imagine. But don't think you have to bear that pain by yourself. We're here for you. Always have been. Always will be. But we can't help you if you don't talk to us, you know? I... I suppose not. Thank you, Sigurd. I'll try to be more open with you from now on. Good. I was worried you never would. <laughs> Positive progress. Positive progress. Hell yeah. Alright, let's see what's waiting for us out here. No! I can't see a thing in this darkness. We'd be surrounded by monsters and not even know it. We must be rain vigilant if we are to proceed. Good job, Eddie. I'll light our path as best I can. I'll have to monitor my mana usage carefully. Right. Don't push yourself, Eddie. Man, what is it with this tower and dark maze anyway? I mean, it's only the second one. Oh, fuck. Grief Eaters. Oh, no, oh, oh, are you a normal statue? I'm gonna bop you then. Hell yeah. Oh, nope, you are not a normal statue. It's been a while since we had to fight one of you. Hey. Okay, so water is their weakness. Unfortunately, no miracles on ice for me. I'm gonna bop you. Oh. Well, no. Don't stop using Ember. Hi. Oh, oh, fuck. Okay. That was fun. Thanks for ambushing me. Now give me my herbs. Potent meds. I'm gonna bop you. I'm gonna bop you. Hell yeah, I'm gonna bop you. Okay, one of you is the way through here. Thank you. No statue. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think I'll... Oh, boy. Damn it, damn it! 
all the places to run out of mana. Calm yourself, Edric. Certainly we have some way of restoring your energy. Oops. I've never actually gotten that cutscene before. We have miracle topics. Back to business. straight through the people instead. Ah. Here is the library. Oh boy. Not good. Well, that's about enough, uh... That's about enough enemy encounters for today. I'm... At least Great Flood's gonna be good against Sirens and, uh, False Idols, since... I think they are both weak against uh, water. Okay. Okay, let's explore here. Self help books on dealing with grief and post traumatic stress. Pages are spattered with small water states, though they have been cried over. A thin yellow piece of paper, ju paper juts out from the book. Read it. The sole survivor of the blank was five-year-old blank blank who was treated for burns and blank, at least into the care of blank soon after. It was thought that she may have. The rest of the article is burned away. Oh, no. The photo album is featuring a happy family of four. The photos are smeared with ashes and charcoal. That's got to be even worse if there were thoughts. Openly blaming the kid for starting the fire. A thin yellow piece of paper juts out from between the books. Read it, yes. The third blank victim was six-month-old Jacob. Or Jackie, as he was called by his family. He was thought to have died as a result of... Blank. Old dead flowers spilled out of the page so the books went opened. The books are burned beyond recognition. Fables and fairy tales extolling the value of family and friends. Something glimmers between the books. Take it, yes. Warp gem. Books. That book containing pictures of Ryan, Peter, Myra, and a fourth person whose face has been burned away. Melissa, no. Let's read it. The husband and father, Tyler Blank, was described as blank at blank. He enjoyed blank at playing with his children in the outdoors. Books about fire safety, firefighting, and arson. His wife Monique was formerly a volunteer, and she enjoyed blank and gardening in her spare time. That's God. That's gotta be painful, especially with the obituary extolling everything they used to be. Stories featuring orphans who found new families. The happy endings have all been torn out. Small satchel. Thank you for the monies. These books have the words, I'm sorry, scrolled throughout their pages over and over again. Damn. A quiet neighborhood near Blank was shaken early mo yesterday morning by a blank fire, resulting in the deaths of a couple and their son. The cause of the fire was ruled to be accidental and originated in the family's kitchen. It was containing illustrations of caged birds and pin butterflies. Well worn Bibles. One of them is entirely blacked out, save for verses that mention fire. Hell fire. Oh, it appears that the group ragtag gay group heroes have finally made it to Terra Vera. It was inevitable, really, as the gods have carded their devastating attitude into the tower's voice, beckoning them to return. In any case, it certainly took them long enough. We guardians have been awaiting this since our world's creation, ready to act upon the Dark One's will. But even we cannot be certain which of the four truly is our leader. But they all appear to have lost their memories of their past lives. I suppose our only course of action at this time is to treat all of those enemies, and drive them away from the tower by any means necessary. The mission is, above all else, to stop them from learning the truth. Are you reading? Sure. 
This was certainly unexpected. Our monsters appeared to have defeated Zog and Tor and Livia to reach the speck of truth. This means to say those who use this curse will not be missed. This does pose a rather pressing problem. The group is clearly at their strongest when they are together. It was, after all, their bonds of friendship that helped create this world in the first place. We would have to separate them if we were to have any chance of stopping them. Morsha will deal with the women and I, the men. We will confront them with their hidden fears, their deepest insecurities to break their spirits. A risky move, one that may very well jog their memories, but it is a risk we are willing to take. If I have wasted enough time recording my thoughts, I do have a tea party to prepare for, after all. Oh! This cannot be. How could Morsha and I have been defeated? Our plan was perfect. Clearly, we have been underestimating these warriors, these gods incarnate. And at this rate, they will all learn the truth, and all we fought for will have been for naught. We have no choice but to send Rek Vingamo, a terrifying monstrosity, one who may be our last hope for success. We must not fear that the rest of us have. Ooh. I feel like this goes further than before. Worst fears have been realized. No, 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 okay. Our mistress has been finally awakened to her true nature, but in doing so, she has compromised the very intent of this world. I'm beginning to understand now why we were created. Why we were made to fight against our liege and keep the truth hidden away. She never intended for any of this to happen. All she had wanted truly was to remain in this world with the others in blissful ignorance. But we failed her. We failed to protect her fantasy of wonder and adventure. And now she has no choice but to face her dearest friends as their enemy. Forgive us, Lady Leela. May you succeed where your servants have failed. May your precious friends remain here with you forever. Elemental affinity various. Elemental beings made up of pure condensed mana. These creatures can only form under specific circumstances. The fact that they would appear in such great numbers as the is surprising. Non magic users often find themselves in danger when confronted by them, as they are not imp most near impervious to most attacks. The only way to defeat them is to use spells of their opposite elements. Despite this, they are fairly docile when left alone. In fact, I have found it easier to utilize environmental factors than torches. To attract or repel them from away from my path. I did notice something different about these elementals who were found in the wild, however. From those found in the wild, however, they all appear to have large, gaping holes in their sides. That those struck by some sort of projectile. Ooh. Whether this means something significant remains a mystery to me. Ooh. Man. That's a good point. I know Eddie's colors are red, and uh, I know Siggy's colors are more yellow than red. And yeah, yeah, it's, there's not really a correlation there to his Dark One route. Okay, false idol. Yep, of course, Elemental Affinity Fire might possibly be the most formidable enemy we faced outside of the Tower Guardians. These statue-like creatures hide in plain sight within the chapel, waiting to strike when least expected. Not only is their physical strength unmatched, but they are capable of deadly fire magic and even seal. Their enemies' abilities had a whim. Indeed, it seems as though every ounce of rage felt by the Dark One is unleashed in their attacks. I'm gonna say, is that Amy? Yep. That is indeed Amy's handwriting. I remember it being bluer last time. Indeed. It seems as though every ounce of rage by the Dark Ones is infested in their attacks. It's unleashed in their attacks. Despite their angelic facades, they truly are a terrible force to be reckoned with. Rage, you say? Toward us, I assume. No. This rage is not directed towards any of you. If anyone, it is directed towards me. And towards heaven itself for interfering in all of this. I see. One who has succumbed to darkness will understandably not take kindly to the intrusion of the light. That's right. Even so, it is my duty to carry that light wherever it is needed. And it is yours to use that light to save your friend, no matter how much they deny it. 
Also, shout out to having multiple versions of these bestiaries, depending on which route you're on. No doubt. I didn't even check these last time. Dark and Twisted Unicorn. A dark and twisted variation of the legendary unicorn, being normally associated with purity and healing. It appears sickly and amazing, and seems to be wearing a protective mask of sorts. Perhaps it's to shield itself from our its own noxious energies. Perhaps. Said noxious energies are enough to incapacitate us in a number of ways. Poison, blindness, among other such ailments. So I wouldn't doubt that it is, its toxicity could affect even itself. Indeed. What I'm curious, most curious about, however, is what such a creature represents in the context of this tower's twisted symbolism. My best guess is that it represents the dark, toxic thoughts that led to all of this. Is a reminder of how even the good and pure can be corrupted, just as the Dark One was. That's why it is critical that the rest of you guard your hearts against its despair. We will never leave this tower intact if you don't. And these things, these flying creatures are truly a force to be reckoned with. They primarily attack with beautiful yet devastating songs. Songs that can do anything from control the wind to confuse its enemies. It also use its songs to heal itself and its fellow monsters, a most intimidating foe indeed. In your, th in your old world, sirens were said to act as divine messengers, but in this twisted place, they are anything but. None of the light and glory of heaven is present in their songs, only wickedness and destruction. I suppose you would know that better than anyone. I suppose you would know that better than anyone, that this corruption of the divine seems to be a common theme in this chapel. It is. The evil that hides behind the grippings of holiness can be the most devastating kind. Please be careful, everyone. Now I'm curious to know if the Dark One has a bestiary entry. Uh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Mistakes were made. Well, that was fortunate. Not getting anywhere near the item drops we were before. Okay, we can just get the. Oh! Fuck. Fucking rip. Rip in pieces, Berserker! Ruby, you're still... Ah... Uh. Okay. I think we're gonna rest here. I wanna get Ruby to level 20. But I'll do that between videos. Just to keep Rubes up the... Up to snuff with everyone else. A little bummed that we aren't getting those angel elixirs, elixirs from those <laughs> from those false idols. A little bummed, but let's just rest and call it a video. Until next time. Until then.